Dictionaries are another very important data type in the Python programming language, as well as just about every other language. They're a fundamental data structure in computer science. Now, they get their name from the concept of a dictionary, where you have words and you can look up the definitions of those words. But in our programs, we'll see that dictionaries are actually more flexible than that. We can decide what we want to uh, use as our keys. Those are the words that we, you would look up in a dictionary and what values you want to associate with those keys. And so what we get is actually a lookup table that is kind of like a list, but more flexible in that we get to decide how we uh, index or subscript no use subscription notation to look up the items in our dictionary. This will allow us to model different kinds of data than we could with a list very naturally. So let's take a look at an example of where we might want to use a dictionary. Say we've got a table that looks something like this, where our headers have uh, the, uh, say the school is what we want to be able to look up some values by, and the values associated with that school are the number of undergraduate students enrolled at that university. So for example, the string UNC would be associated with the integer value 19,400. And notice that there's no indexing here in the way that we've seen it with lists, right? With lists, you had to have you know, 0, 1, 2 as your indices of the list, and there was no flexibility there. You couldn't decide how you wanted to arrange the items in your list uh, by the key or, or what you would look it up by. It's sort of built in and, uh, and, and inherent to the idea of a list that we're going to use uh, integers that start from zero and are contiguous, counting up one by one uh, as how we will organize and arrange the items in our list. Whereas with a dictionary, notice we can choose whatever keys we want. Notice there, and in, in when I say key, uh, we're, let me actually, let's make a note of that here. I'm talking specifically about the value that we'll use to look up some definition or some item associated with it. So uh, this will be the value column, all right? And in many ways, we think of this as a one-way mapping. And in fact, this data structure in other languages is called a map, where we would kind of think, okay, UNC is associated with or maps to the value uh, 19,000, Duke maps to the value 6,717, NCSU maps to the value of 26,000. And so let's actually make some notes of um, other common names of uh, a dictionary. So in Python, we'll see that these are called dictionaries. Uh, and in other languages, these are commonly referred to as a map, where we have a mapping from one value to another, um, or a key value store. And sometimes you'll see it specifically called a, a different iteration of, or a different uh, variation of map, which is a hash map. And in the next course, uh, a data structures course, you would learn how these things are built under the hood and how, the, how you could create your own maps. But we're gonna be using Python's default built-in dictionary. Uh, so all the same, if you hear someone talking about a map in Java, they're talking about a dictionary in Python, very similar uh, uh, concept. Okay, so we've kind of gotten a high level understanding that um, we've got these keys and they're associated with values. So let's assume that maybe um, this, uh, this map here, this dictionary is associated with a variable named schools, right? So uh, I'm going to write in just a variable named schools. And uh, I'm gonna say that it's associated with this table. So what can we, what do we know about this schools table? And then we'll take a look at how we can take what we know and represent that in Python proper. So the first thing we should understand is what is the actual data type here? So if we were declaring a variable for schools, uh, the data type needs to specify that this is a dictionary, right? So we would have you know, our variable named schools, and then we need to specify its type. All right, so in green, I will specify that we're talking about a dictionary. And in Python, dictionary is abbreviated to just dict, the D-I-C-T, uh, shorthand for dictionary. So we have a dictionary, and then we're going to have uh, some square brackets, just like when we're declaring a list type, right? 
And inside these square brackets, we need two other types. So for this example, what are our types? Well, we've got a string and we've got uh, an int, right? So if we were to represent that in this diagram, we would have um, a stir for our key and an int for our value type, right? So notice that this is a little bit different than list, and this is a fundamental difference where uh, here we're specifying the key type. We're saying for, a value, for any value to be a key in this dictionary, it needs to be a string. And on the, uh, in the second, what we call a type parameter, because we're uh, parameterizing the type of this dictionary, we have a, uh, the value type. Right? And so this is saying that schools is a dictionary where the keys must be strings, right? And those are the keys that we're talking about here. And the values associated with those keys must be integers, okay? So now that we have um, this set up and the we can represent the type, how can we actually uh, initialize an empty dictionary? Well, just like with list and with every other type, there's a constructor that we can use, uh, and that's the simplest, most direct way. Um, there's also a type literal that we can use, and we'll take a look at that. So let's uh, say construct. And so if we wanted to construct and assign, we would say schools is assigned. And then here, just a new dictionary, right? And so this built-in uh, function, DICT, is going to construct a blank, empty, new dictionary on the heap and associate schools with it. Just like with lists, dictionaries are reference types, and we'll see that we can mutate them. If we can create an empty dictionary, that must mean that we can add items to it. So let's see how we would do that. So let's see uh, how we would assign or uh, set. Yeah, let me change back to white here. Uh, set a value, set a key value pair. So how do we assign a new entry into this uh, dictionary? Well, we would say something like schools, and then we can directly, and actually let me highlight this in green because this is the important part here. We can directly establish that the key, say uh, UNC, is assigned a value of say um, 19400, right? And I'm throwing in this underscore, that's optional. Uh, in Python, you can use underscores to separate out digit places. Uh, we could have just written it 19400. You can't use commas though. Commas have special meaning in the programming language. So unfortunately we can't use commas, but we can use uh, underscores if we wanted to. So uh, this is going to establish a new key value pair in our dictionary, saying that the key UNC is now associated with the value uh, 19400. Uh, we can also access a key value pair in a very similar way. So the way that we would access it is we would just use schools and then a subscription notation uh, to say, okay, what is the value for associated with, with UNC? Um, we will see that there are some other operations that we can carry out on dictionaries soon, but let's go ahead and set up an example in Python to just play around with this for a moment. So I'm gonna ask you to join me in VS Code and go ahead and start your uh, VS Code up. Set up a new file in the lessons directory named dictionaries.py and go ahead and add a, a doc comment or a doc string to the top of this, which is to say that we're demonstrating uh, some of dictionary's capabilities. So the first thing we might want to demonstrate is uh, declaring the type of a dictionary, right? And so let's continue with our example. Imagine we have a variable named schools, and what we just looked at was we needed to declare its type to be a uh, dictionary of, and then we the first type parameter here will be the type of the key. So string, and the second type will be the type of the value, so int, and we can assign, and, and I'm actually just going to leave it as that. We're not going to initialize this variable yet. We're just declaring this variable's type. All right, next, what do we do? Well, we can uh, initialize to an empty 
dictionary. Right? We could have done this all in one step. Um, I'm choosing to make it two so that it's obvious what's going on where. So schools is assigned an empty dictionary. We'll come back and learn a little bit more about dictionary literals to see that there's another way that we could do this. Um, but the, uh, the most direct and, and, and canonical way is to say, hey, go construct a new dictionary for me. So we're going to call dictionaries constructor function. Right? And we'll learn more about how we can write our own constructor functions later uh, for creating our own data types. But here we're constructing a new dictionary. And, uh, and then let's go ahead and associate um, uh, set a key value pairing in the dictionary. Right? So schools, UNC, is assigned uh, 19,400. Right? Again, you don't have to use this underscore. It's not really related to this video, but we can't use a comma here. Uh, so if I wanted to keep it simple, I could just say 19,400. Um, totally a stylistic choice as to which way you go uh, with how you represent large integer literals in a program. Okay, so we've got uh, a single entry here. We could set up the other entries as well. Um, but let's go ahead and try printing schools and just convincing ourselves that we can see what a dictionary looks like underneath, like when it's printed as a string representation in our terminal. All right, so I'm going to save my file and open up my terminal here and try running my program. So Python, run the module, lessons, dictionaries. And what do you know? First, and this is sort of giving us a hint at what dictionary literals are going to look like, you'll notice that the, this value is surrounded in curly braces rather than square brackets. So with a list, we saw that the square brackets surrounded, and then we just saw the items. We didn't see the indices. But with a dictionary literal, notice we're seeing curly braces, and then we are seeing the key, which is a string in this case, and then a colon, and then uh, the value associated with it. Okay, so we see that UNC has 19,400 students. Okay, so we could establish some other key value pairs here. Uh, schools Duke is assigned, um, and let me look back at my table, 6,717. Schools NCSU is assigned 26,550. And if we were to save and run this program, now that we've added a few extra key value entries to our table or to our dictionary, we see that they're going to show up just the same. The key value pairings are separated by a comma. Okay. So um, why don't we actually make this a slightly better? Uh, so let's add some notes here. Print a uh, dictionary literal representation. Right, so we can print a dictionary and what we'll get is the literal syntax and we'll come back and look at why we might want to use that literal syntax because as you're starting to see, if you want to initialize some values in a dictionary that you already know up front, this feels a little bit tedious. So maybe we can use a dictionary literal and we'll try taking a look at that uh, as an alternative way to initialize a dictionary when we know the, the, the key values we want it to start out with. Um, but we'll come back to that. Uh, and let's also try accessing uh, access um a value by its key and this is also called looking up okay, we're going to perform a lookup in our uh in our key value store here and so we can say print and then just like we would kind of expect hopefully schools and then unc and maybe i'll make this an f string to say uh, unc has and then Surround this uh, value in the uh, the curly braces students. All right, and uh, right. So this is one of those places where notice that uh, I made a, a mistake here in my formatting of this string. So Python has these two. Uh, quotation marks that are saying, here's the start of my F string, here's the end of my F string. Uh, but notice that I tried to use that same double quote for my lookup value uh, or for the key when trying to index this um, dictionary. 
So this is kind of why strings are permitted to use either single quotes or double quotes. Uh, sometimes we uh, have a case where we want to have a double quoted string, like an F string, but make use of the single quote or another string within that, right? So we're saying this is the start of the, the outer string. Well, how do we actually use double quotes here? Well, we can't, right? Um, and so this is a little bit more uh, in depth than, than we needed to go on, on string literals at this point. Um, but it's not an uncommon situation to find yourself in where, okay, I wanted to actually look up, you know, some specific string index here. Uh, so I needed to use a string within my F strings, you know, template. How do I get around that? Well, this is one of the reasons why we can quote strings with either single quotes or double quotes. And in this course, we're tending to use double quotes uh, conventionally and single quotes where we need to be special. And that's mostly because in many other programming languages, that's common. In Python, you'll actually see it very commonly the opposite. Uh, it's neither here nor there. So let's try running this program and seeing if we are now in good shape. So I'm going to run my program one more time. So oops, I started up another terminal accidentally. There we go. So I'm going to run my program one more time. We see that dictionary literal printed and then UNC has 19,400 students printed, right? So this is how we're out able to look up a specific value in a dictionary. We use the subscription notation. Notice that with a dictionary, the type of expression that we put in our subscription notation here is the type of key that we have stored in this dictionary, right? And there's a strong connection there. If we're saying that schools is a dictionary where our keys are strings and our values are integers, then when we go to look up a value or we go to store a value, the subscription notation is gonna have the keys type, which in this case is string. And we're gonna to have to associate it with the values type, which is an integer. If I had tried to associate this with a string, we would see that we get an error. It says we can't assign the literal string 19,400 to a parameter of type integer, right? To this type parameter, this value type parameter, which is an integer, right? So these types matter and are going to be important for keeping track of what type of dictionary are you working with under the hood. Okay. Um, well, let's say uh, we wanted to remove one of these uh, items. So we could do that with pop. Uh, so our, um, our, our ability to remove a, a value from a dictionary works just like a, with a list. So uh, let's try adding a note for remove a key value pair. Oops, remove a key value pair from a dictionary. So let's say we wanted to get rid of Duke. Um, schools.pop and Duke. And you'll notice that in this type hint that it's giving us, it's telling us we have to give the key. And I should make a note of that, by its key. Almost every app operation that you're going to perform on a dictionary, you'll perform um, with its key because that's what we have, that's what the, uh, the, the, the table is made for looking up. We can look up its key and reference values by its key. We can remove a key value pair by its key. Um, we need to know the key in order to get to the value. Typically, it's very ex that's a very fast operation. Um, dictionaries aren't very fast if we're trying to look up a specific value and we don't know its key. Um, we'll come back and talk a lot about that a little bit more. Okay, so we can remove a value. Um, we can also test. Um, so if uh, so, we can test for existence of a key and we can say something like um, is duke present is a boolean variable and it's going to be assigned um, schools dot as key actually let's use uh, we're going to use the a, a very pythonic way of doing this rather than a method so duke and then there's a special keyword in schools, right? And this is kind of cool. Um, we can say key, and then we're asking, is the key in school? So is Duke in schools? And this is a Boolean expression. It will result in either true or false. So if the string Duke is in the 
um, dictionary schools, uh, then this will evaluate to true. Otherwise, it will evaluate to false. Um, so we could print is Duke present. And let's make this an F string as well. So we know that we're seeing in our output. So Duke is present. And I'm going to surround this in curly braces and another pair of double quotes. All right. So we're seeing how to create an empty dictionary, how to associate new keys with their values. We're seeing how to remove a value. And here we're testing whether or not a key exists. So we can look up whether uh, we've even seen a key. So we can try this again. And notice that Duke is present false. Um, and if we were to have printed out schools, and we could do that one more time. So print schools. We would see that only UNC and NCSU are left remaining in that dictionary. Okay. So let's actually uh, take a moment here. And I want to see if we can get a sense of what's going on um, in this example in memory, just to give us a sense of how we would represent some of these concepts um, in, in a memory diagram. So we'll start with our globals frame on the stack. And we will need some heap space because our dictionaries do live in the heap. Okay. So just like lists, dictionaries live in the heap. So in globals, what we see here is we're declaring a variable named schools, but we're not associating any value with it quite yet. I mean, we're saying we're, we've got a variable, it's going to be named schools, and this is what its type is going to be. A dictionary from where the keys are strings and the values are integers. All right. So on line eight is where we actually construct that dictionary. So how do we know what types to construct? Well, we look at what are we associating that dictionary with, and we see that its type is a dictionary of string to int. So on the heap, we'll have a new dictionary from string to int. Great. On line 11, we're saying, and oh, and we need to associate this. So not only do we construct this dictionary, that's what this expression does. We're saying assign whatever that constructed to schools. So now schools is going to be a reference to that dictionary. Right? So just like with lists, when we have variables that are assigned dictionaries, we're assigning a reference to that dictionary on the heap. Great. Now with line 11, we're saying, okay, establish a new key the key UNC with the value 19,400, right? So here we're appending an item effectively to this dictionary. Notice that unlike with lists where you had to call the append method with a dictionary in Python, we're able to assign directly to a key that does not yet exist. And this creates a new entry in our dictionary where the key comes first and the value comes second. So similarly, on line 12, we're seeing that Duke is associated with 6,717. Now I should mention that behind the scenes, um, how a dictionary is represented under the hood in memory is a little bit more nuanced than what we're seeing here, but you'll learn all about that in a future course on data structures, if you want to take a course and learn how this is made under the hood. Uh, we get to live in a world where um, we can use this abstraction of a dictionary. It's built into the language and we don't have to worry too much about how it works behind the scenes. We can just understand its properties and make use of the abstraction that's given to us. And that's what we're doing in this example. So NCSU has 26,150. Great. When we printed schools, we printed a uh, dictionary literal representation. And we still need to talk about dictionary literals. We'll come back to that. When we accessed an item, notice that we're using the subscription notation. When you use the subscription notation on a dictionary, we're saying, okay, look up schools, so schools, and then use this uh, uh, inside of the square brackets. We're gonna say, okay, jump to this table and look up in the key column, the string UNC, right? So you can only look up a value by its key. And that's, so we use the string UNC and we got back 19,400. That's why that printed out there, all right? When we went to pop Duke, 
what happens is we just get rid of it, right? So Duke is removed from this uh, dictionary. Its key is no longer associated with its value. So if we were to try and look up Duke, we would get an index error and say that, hey, there's no key uh, and, and that's fine. Uh, and then later on in our program, um, we set up an is Duke present variable and this in expression is a special Python keyword that's very handy and it's testing whether the string Duke is a key in the school's dictionary, all right? So this is nice because we can use this in an if statement as well. So um, we could we could have written this, you know, if, if Duke is in schools, then print, um, and I'll change this print, this string to be found the key Duke in schools, else print no key Duke in schools, right? And so because we just popped it, um, this is always gonna print no key Duke in schools, uh, but if we had commented this line out and tried running our program, we should, and I could do that, so let's try that. We should see found the key Duke in school. So I just commented out the pop. We, we didn't remove Duke this time. So we found the key Duke and it's still there when we printed our literal one more time. Uh, and you kind of get the sense here that, okay, uh, these are some of the fundamental operations that we have available to us on a dictionary. We can create an empty dictionary. We can add new key value pairs to the dictionary. There's one other thing I should mention, which was we can update the values. So um, let's do that. So let's um, update or reassign a key value pair, right? So if you, uh, let's say next year, UNC decided to um, uh, bring its enrollment to 20,000, we could say that UN, uh, schools of index or of key, I should say UNC is reassigned to be 19,000, uh, sorry, 20,000 on the dot. Uh, what's kind of neat about operators like the relative reassignment operator is we could also have said, okay, well, what if NCSU wanted to grow by, you know, say 100 students, keep pressing a button accidentally, right? Uh, so we could say schools, NCSU is assigned schools, NCSU plus 200. But notice that uh, this is a case where we can use relative reassignment and where relative reassignment starts to be actually really nice. We can use the addition assignment operator here. So schools NCSU plus equal to 200. And if we were to continue in our example and imagine, okay, well, we reached line 32, what happens in memory? Well, what happens in memory on line 32 is UNC would be updated to be 20,000 and NCSU would be updated to be you know 200 more, so 26,350. Right, uh, and we can try running this example. I'll save my work, and sure enough, we see that we've updated that value uh, associated with UNC to be twenty thousand and NCSU as well. Okay, so there are a few notes that we should make about things that are important to understand. Let me clear that uh, scratch out uh, about dictionaries and keys and values before we talk about the final um, thing that you need to know, which are the literal representations. Okay, so some of the things that you should know that are important about uh, dictionaries. You cannot have duplicate keys. Right, so keys, the keys in a dictionary form what we call a set. And that means that you can only have one of that item in the set. So we can only have one key UNC in a given dictionary. Now you can have many different dictionaries and you could have the key UNC in all of those dictionaries and that would be fine. Um, but for a single dictionary object on the heap, you can only have one key uh, associated with one value. You can have duplicate values. So what does this mean? And why is this important? Well, let's imagine that we're trying to model a game where we have like two or three players. Um, well, at the beginning of the game, maybe we associate you know, this, the name of the player with their number of points. So like Chris has zero points 
Khaki has zero points and Esri has zero points, right? And so notice that each of these three keys is associated with uh, the value zero. So the value zero occurs three times in this dictionary, this key value uh, store, but the, the, the keys only occur once. You can't have Chris twice in the dictionary as a key. Like this isn't possible. Um, and the reason for this is because, well, what does it mean to look up Chris? What do you expect to get back? Two integers? Do you, that means you'll be given back a list of both Chris values. Well, which one did you actually want? And it turns out uh, none of those things are even possible. You don't have to worry about those things because you can only store uh, one key. Uh, each key has to be unique in the dictionary. If you did want to be able to associate multiple values with a given key, there are ways of doing that that involve combining the idea of a dictionary and a list together. So maybe we would have a dictionary where each of our um, values is actually a list, right? of the different points. Uh, and you could imagine that each of these entries has a list associated with it. But we'll look at this in the future where uh, we see that, you know, we can compose these data types such that uh, you can have data types where you have dictionaries with lists as the values, you have lists with dictionaries as the item values, uh, and you can go either way. Um, but that's a little bit beyond our concern right now. So you can only look up values by keys. You can't look up values by, um, by, or you can't look up keys by values. So let's think about that really quickly. Oops. So what do I mean by that? Um, so let's say our lookup table, and I actually want to give you one more example of a different type of dictionary. Let's say we wanted to have, um, uh, sort of invert the table that we were looking at before. How could we have a dictionary where the number of students is the key and the school associated with that is the value? Well, we could have, so let's say invert schools be the name of our variable. And that's going to be of type uh, dictionary where the key is an integer and the value is a string, okay? And uh, here, I wanna also show you while we're doing this, um, actually, let's, let's keep this example very simple and say that, okay, invert schools. And then we wanna associate UNC's enrollment count, which was something on the order of 19,400 we can associate that with the string UNC. So if we compared this with the previous example where we had just the variable schools, whose type was a dictionary from string to integer, notice that now what we're seeing is, uh, this is a dictionary where an integer is mapping to a string. So here the integer 19400 would be mapping to the string UNC. And in our table, what we would see is, uh, this would be a dictionary where the key types are integers, and the value types are strings. And we would have 19,400, and that's associated with UNC, right? Now you probably wouldn't want to use a dictionary for this type of use because it's highly likely that two schools have very similar enrollments, right? It'd be weird for every school in the nation or in the world to have a unique number of students with it. There's probably two schools with a thousand students in it flat. Um, but what we can see here is that it is possible uh, to try and think about the invert or the inversion of a dictionary. Um, we just have to be careful because if there, if you try and invert a dictionary and you did have duplicate values, what are you gonna do when you now have duplicate keys? Maybe you just pick one of them um, to be the winner. Maybe you throw an error and say, hey, you tried to reverse or invert a dictionary uh, that had duplicate values in it. so. You can't do that. Uh, you need to, before you try and invert it, uh, fix those duplicates. Uh, in any case, the point is we have flexibility in what we specify as our key type and our value type. So if we want a dictionary from 
uh, integers to booleans. We could do that if we wanted a dictionary from floats to strings. We could do that if we wanted from strings to booleans. That's fine too. Um, we have a lot of control over what we choose to be our key type and our value type. They don't have to be different either. I should mention that. We could also have a dictionary where our key type is string and our value type is string. And in fact, if we thought about like the dictionary, the, the physical book that you can buy uh, or that you use online, this is you know the type of a, of a dictionary where we have the string would be the word and then the, uh, the, the key would be the word that is being defined and then the definition for that would be the value type, right? Um, so you have a lot of flexibility here. Okay, let's talk about the last item that we need to cover with dictionaries, which are dictionary literals. And I want to go back to the code example for this. And add another line, which is um, demonstration of dictionary literals. OK. Um, now we uh, let's go ahead and reassign schools to be a brand new empty dictionary. Right? So this is uh, an example of the empty dictionary literal, right? So this is effectively the same as constructing with um, an empty dictionary. There's not a real difference here. Uh, this is just a shorter hand literal notation for constructing an empty dictionary. Turns out, um, as you learn some more advanced Python, you can do some things with the constructor of a dictionary that you can't do with a literal that are very handy. Like you could take certain lists and convert them into dictionaries in a, in a pretty neat way, um, but that's a little bit beyond our scope right now. So if we were to print schools, we would see that it's just the empty dictionary. Um, we could alternatively initialize key value pairs. So um, let's go ahead and, yeah, let's print schools again. And we would see that we've got an empty dictionary for schools, and if we were to uh, say schools is assigned, and then we use these curly braces again, and now the format is we give the key, and then a colon, and then the value, and if we have multiple values, we'll separate them with a comma. So for example, the key is UNC, the value is 19,400, the key is uh, Duke, uh, we can leave the I in there, uh, and the value is 6,000, 717, uh, and we get uh, NCSU, and the value is 26,150. Uh, I should say that as you're writing these, this is one way to initialize it. Um, you can use some white space or new line characters. Dang, keep, keep pressing the wrong button there uh, to make it a little bit easier to read. So this is the same as saying, uh, you know, initializing something like this. And that kind of makes it a little bit easier to, to read with the eyes, but either way, the same means the same, right? So I might just even leave it where we started off. Okay, and if I were to print schools again, we'll see that the last line has this literal associated with it, and the previous line had, you know, the empty uh, dictionary literal. At each of these points, we're completely replacing uh, and constructing new dictionaries on the heap so this would be a new empty dictionary literal. This would be a new initialized dictionary literal. So in this example, we would have had three dictionaries on the heap that all get reassigned, that school gets reassigned a, a, a reference to. Um, so you notice, you know, there's the empty that we printed out. And then the very final one was we reinitialized um, with Dookie in the, uh, in, as a key in our dictionary. And we saw that. Okay, so dictionary literals are a nice shorthand way of initializing your dictionaries. Um, one of the common things that you do with a dictionary is count values. So one of the things that you might do is if you wanted to count up the number of times any given word in uh, a book like Shakespeare's corpus, uh, all of Shakespeare's works, uh, you could use a dictionary and each word you find in the string you could add that as a key to the dictionary if it doesn't exist yet and uh, set its count to one. Or if you've seen a word before, you increase its count like you're tallying those words. And a dictionary could be used to store, say, the counts of every single word in a book or a series of books or across the entire internet. 
uh, and that's a common use of them. Um, they're used for keeping track of scores. Uh, there are many uses that we'll come across. This is a very valuable sort of bread and butter data type to have it, uh, comfort with and in your toolkit. One final note that we should make is what happens when you try and access a key that doesn't exist. So what if we tried to print the number of students of schools uh, UNCC? And notice that uh, So notice that nothing prevents us from trying to ask for UNCC, but we try and run this and notice that we get a key error. And uh, it tells us in this file printout, uh, let me actually try and running, running this again so we can see this trace back. So notice that um, there's something interesting happening here. On line 48, we're asking for this key UNCC. Well, in the dictionary literal that we just established, there is no key UNCC, only UNC, so we don't have um, UNCC. And if we look at this traceback, well, we see a few things. The very last line when our program crashes due to an error is sort of a message that indicates what type of error, a key error. So, okay, we have a key error in a dictionary when we try and look up a key that does not exist in that dictionary. And it tells us that the value of the key that we were trying to look up, UNCC, okay? That's helpful, but sometimes it's even more helpful to know where that error occurred. And this traceback can look kind of overwhelming and yours is gonna look a little bit different than mine. Um, but typically, if we start from the bottom and work our way up, what we'll see is notice that this is saying, okay, here's some file and ignore these details. But notice here's lessons in dictionaries.py. So that's the file that we're working in, right? So it's saying this error occurred when we tried to run some code in this file. And then it's even telling us on line 48. So this is the line where the error occurred. So our error message here is telling us that uh, exactly the line number that this error occurred on. And then notice that it's giving us the statement that it is this line of code at line 48, which caused this error to occur. So when you run into errors in your program, that's how you can sort of use this output, which you know a lot of this feels kind of crazy. Like, what is what are these lines? Well, this is some of the code that it took to get into our program. So notice this is run pi.py. That's sort of a built-in, we don't, we don't see that code, we don't ever interact with that code. That's Python's internal code that is helping us get to the point of actually calling and evaluating your program as you expected it. The last little thing that I might mention here is this is saying that it happened in our module scope. And you can think of module as the global scope. Um, what's really cool about these error tracebacks, and we'll look at this in the future, is that this traceback, if you had function calls, it's going to, and we're evaluating function calls on the stack, you would see one of these print statements per frame that you're program was currently evaluating in and had not yet returned. So all of the active frames uh, would show you, uh, would be shown in this example. And the very last one would be the current frame that's being evaluated and the line of code that your error was encountered on. All right, great work thinking through dictionaries. They're a fundamental data type in uh, Python as well as in many different programming languages. Dictionaries are kind of like lists in that we can store many values in this data structure, but they're very different in that we get to choose how we index our keys. And so the order doesn't matter as much as just being able to quickly look up, does this key exist in this dictionary? Okay, what is the value associated with that key in this dictionary? And so on. Whereas with a list, it was important that the order did matter and you didn't have control over the indexing, right? It started from zero and counted up and you're kind of uh, uh, limited to that mechanism. So dictionaries you'll see all the time in programming and are a very, very valuable data structure to understand.